Hello, Chart Watchers, and welcome to this Friday, June 14th, 2019 Market Watchers Live Show with your hosts, Tom Boley and Mary Ellen McGonigal. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show, and for our regulars, welcome back. Let's take a look at what's going on in the market as we close out this week. The Dow Jones Industrial Average currently down 40 points. The S&P 500 down eight. Uh, the NASDAQ and Russell 2000 both being hit a little bit more on a relative basis. NASDAQ down more than a half percent. Same goes for the Russell 2000. Ten-year Treasury yield back in a decline once again. Got a little bit of a bounce earlier this week. But we are now back down near the recent lows, currently at uh, 2.09 percent. Um, volatility index really just flatlining here over the last six, seven days as the market has uh, struggled, just kind of going sideways here. A little bit of a flag formation, by the way, off the uptrend, just kind of going sideways. Volatility has done basically the same thing, on, except uh, in reverse, moving lower and now in a flag formation. Utilities uh, leading to the upside today, along with real estate. So a couple of defensive groups. Real estate, as you can see, actually making another high. Technology lagging, industrials lagging. Uh, but within the consumer discretionary space, home builders making a really nice breakout. Uh, beautiful move. Low interest rates certainly helping that group. Overnight, uh, Broadcom came out with a not so great report and a not so great outlook. And semiconductors, as a result, really taking a hit. You can see down almost 3% on the day. Still above that late May low, but not very good action there. Uh, also, uh, you can see the DJUSDS taking a hit in the industrial area, <clears throat> excuse me, AVGO down $18, and in the uh, Dow Jones, Cisco taking the biggest hit. Uh, it is down a couple percent today, but I actually think this is an area where we could see a recovery off these moving averages. Cisco looked really good, but talked about the fact that it had this false breakout earlier this week. I think that is what has uh, generated some of the short-term sellers but I look for some buying to resume on these moving averages. Okay, Mary Ellen, it is the end of another week. I do want to thank you so much for uh, stepping in for me the last couple of days. Uh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you. Yes, it's been a fun week, actually. I, I've enjoyed it. Got to uh, mingle with John Murphy yesterday, and he, he did a great presentation. We had some great guests. Yeah, it's always uh, always fun to have John on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is starting to come in on a regular basis, so I'm sure that was a good time. And, of course, you uh, got to work with uh, Aaron. You uh, bet. Yeah, Aaron, as as always, a pleasure. Yeah. So I'll tell you, I'm looking at the market here, and I know uh, one of the things I want everybody to, uh, to take a look at is today's poll because Broadcom came out last night after the bell and gave everybody a little bit of a jolt, especially in that semiconductor space. So that poll is going to – just uh, see what you think about that semiconductor group now with that warning. Is it already built in? Um, you know, what do you think? Would you be a buyer on this weakness today? A seller? You just hold through this. What, what are your thoughts there? Uh, Mary Ellen and I at the end of the show in the final segment, what would you do? We'll also give you our thoughts there. So uh, looking forward to it. Should be a really good show here, Mary Ellen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot going on. That's for sure. Yeah, and uh, you know the market's trying to hold up here, but at the same time, given some signs of maybe either just pausing or maybe trying to roll over, we're seeing a little bit more of a rolling over effect on the Nasdaq, but it is still holding some overhead um, or some uh, gap support. We'll talk about all that in just a minute. First, let's go ahead and get into the upcoming schedule. We do have a number of great guests coming on here. Danielle Shea, Greg Harmon, and Julius will all be with us next week. And if you liked the panel discussion that we had gold versus Bitcoin a week or so ago with uh, Dave Keller and Aaron, uh, well, we're going to do another one, June 25th, on pop culture stocks. And uh, Marion, I think you've been thrown in the ring with uh, Aaron. Is that correct? I have. We're, we're going to duke it out. No, we're, we're going to do a great presentation on, on some of these more popular stocks and their outlook, and it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I think it will be as well. That was a very well-received uh, panel discussion last time, so we'll do it again. As far as today goes, our agenda, we've got the what's hot, what's not. American Express will be our first stock in the 10 in 10. You can check out that chart, see what you think of it, see if you agree with me. Um, and then we'll do two segments, What, or excuse me, watch your stop, uh, and what would you do, as I mentioned earlier. So that is how the show will go. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the economic reports and get this thing started today. There were a lot of economic reports. Um, you can see them on your screen. I'm not really going to go over them. I will say, though, the big one, in my view, was the April retail sales, which were revised significantly higher. Um, April retail sales originally came out uh, with a drop of two-tenths of 1%. They revised it to a, a, an increase of three-tenths of 1%. That's a pretty big revision to a prior retail sales report. So I thought that was worth mentioning. Also, May industrial production, they're coming in twice as high as expected. You just wonder with the Fed coming up with a meeting, what are they going, is this going to change their stance at all? The fact that now retail sales were better than they thought in April, industrial production is stronger than they anticipated. I don't know. I still think we're going to get a rate uh, cut in July. I don't think they're going to do anything in June, but we'll see. As far as that yield goes, 10 year treasury yield, you can see moving back down here. And this is a long term uh, three year chart that I have up. I wanted to point out a couple of things, though. We've talked about this 2.04% uh, yield support from back in September of 2017. The other thing I want to point out is how oversold we are on the yield. Now, the yield can't technically be oversold, but hopefully you know what I mean. We've been in this decline for quite a while. All, you know, nothing goes down forever like this. And we've seen in the past when we've gotten the RSI on the yield down below 30 and we've gotten a stretched PPO that we do tend to see a bounce back. Well, the PPO currently is even more stretched and we were very oversold. So it makes sense that we would get another push here back to the upside. But we'll be watching very closely to see if the yield support from September of 2017 holds. All right, as far as the earnings go, we had a few out last night, mentioned Broadcom. That was just ugly. That was an ugly report. They fell short of expectations. They um, you know, came up uh, short in terms of their guidance going forward. Just not a uh, very good look there. So let me pull up a chart and uh, take a look at um, AVGO. All right. Uh, actually, I'm going to do this on the on the relative chart because I actually thought this was a little bit more of an important announcement because if you look at the relative strength of Broadcom going into this announcement last night, it actually was near the high relative to the semiconductor group as a whole. So you've got one of the relative leaders coming out and saying that they are seeing broad based demand uh, potentially in decline going forward. And that is not going to be a good thing. However, there's always a however. Um, if I look down here at the bottom, I see that uh, the semiconductors on a relative basis to the S&P 500 have not broken down. Now, they haven't broken down on an absolute basis either. But when I was looking back, I do think these relative charts can play a key role for us. And when you look back, say, at the end of last year, well, over the summer of last year, see how we and I'm going to annotate this. I think it maybe it'll be easier to see if I annotate it. But this is just a chart of the semiconductor. So you see how the prior uh, low was holding for three or four months, and then we finally broke down. That's an absolute chart. So it's not breaking down on an absolute basis. However, look what, you know, if we go back to this low right here on an absolute basis and draw this line in, that was the relative support line. So what, what was happening is semiconductors were holding on to support, but the overall market at that point was going higher. So on a relative basis, semiconductors were breaking down. I think that was a warning sign. The fact that the market was moving higher, but the semis kept coming down to test this support level. But when we got to the very bottom, draw a couple more lines in here, take a look at the last move down here on the semiconductors to put in that low in December because the relative bottom was already in in November. So here, price action is telling us, oh, things aren't very good. We're breaking down. And yet, on a relative basis, we started to see money actually rotating into semis versus the S&P 500. So I do think these can give us some signals. And I'm not quite sure at this point what it's telling me, but I, I am going to watch to see if this relative support area holds on the, the semiconductors. A lot of, uh, lot of work uh, still to be done there to see whether or not we get that uh, breakdown or not. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I think we're kind of in limbo here in, you know, at the current moment. 
So that was uh, Broadcom and kind of looking. See, so far, Broadcom is holding on to the support level. I really want to hold 250 on Broadcom because it has been one of the leaders in the semiconductors. And even on a relative basis, we have not seen that breakdown. Uh, you know, we go back the last six, seven months. So that uh, 250 area right here um, should should provide some pretty good support. We'll see. And I do like the fact that after gapping down today, uh, Broadcom is, has got a hollow candle, meaning that there were buyers at the open as a as um, you know, in contrast to the stock gapping down and then continuing to move to the downside. All right, a couple of other stocks that we can take a look at that reported earnings. One was uh, Finisar. Now, these are this is a stock that um, you know is much smaller in terms of market cap than Broadcom, but still, you know, it's a stock that we want to pay attention to. It's in a really strong area of the market, uh, the telecom equipment group. The problem with the stock is that it has not been one of the better stocks within the group. So even though the group's been going up and been moving sideways and the relative strength has been there for telecom stocks versus the S&P, notice Finisar has actually been losing ground for over three months versus the S&P 500. So I think uh, Finisar is one. With its earnings report, I'd like to see it hold that 20-day. If it fails to, I'd be a little uh, concerned. And then one other stock, uh, HEXO. We've talked about this one a lot. They did come out with their earnings. I don't have the relative charts here. But you can see just on an absolute basis, I don't really like losing this $6 level. So unless we can come back in, put some sort of reversing candle in today, I would be a little skeptical, a little cautious here with this stock. Um, I wanted to bring up a couple of uh, industry groups. Actually, I'll do it on a, rel a regular chart. Um, one is in the energy space. This is oil equipment and services. Just wanted to point down that we are, or point out that we're on the verge of maybe another breakdown. We want to watch this group closely, continuing to trade beneath that declining 20-day moving average. Not a good look to the chart. Also, the toys you can see, and I've talked about this a lot. Toys keeps getting rebuffed by the sellers at about 840 to 850, and we're seeing it again moving back down. What would be bullish is holding this moving average and then making a breakout. Until then, I'd be a little cautious here. And then the final one is home construction. Mentioned this at the top of the show, but you can see the tops here right around this 840 level, recent low 780. I think if we make a breakout through 840, this could be a push up to 900 on the home construction index. And this is one that has continued to perform very well on, uh, on the weekly chart. You can see after getting above that 20-week moving average, we pulled back a couple weeks ago, tested it. Now we're breaking out to new highs. This is very bullish. A technical action, I think, on the home construction group. All right, we are going to do a scooter mover, uh, scooter mover of the day. So this stock uh, is Facebook. You've probably heard of it before. Um, on the large caps, it's not on the list here, but it is. it was earlier. And the reason I picked it, if we pull the chart up, you can see that it is now moving. I'm going to update this because it's from earlier today. Um, but here you can see the scooter mover or the scooter is at 73. It's probably up about 10 or 11 today, moving back above 70. But it's not just about the scooter moving. It's also making a technical breakout here. This downtrend is being broken back to the upside. And uh, it's got a chance to make a relative breakout versus the Internet group. So I think Facebook looks really good here. Uh, that is my scooter mover of the day. All righty. Now we're going to move right into upgrades and downgrades. And uh, not a whole lot of action in that part of the world today, but we certainly have a couple of names we can review. The first one is a restaurant stock. It's BJ's, BJRI. We're looking at a daily price chart. The restaurant group has really been uh, quite strong of late. This stock, of course, not participating in the rally and we can see this very confirmed downtrend the stock did gap up today on the upgrade but you can see that it was met with resistance at this downward trending 50 day simple moving average it did gap up so it's up about a good healthy four percent but we are nowhere near reversing this downtrend. I'd need to see a breakup above that 50. And the MACD is trying to have that positive crossover black line up through the red, but you're still below that net neutral zero RSI poised to turn positive. Let's look at another upgrade here. 
and the ticker symbol on this next one is HLIT. And this particular stock we can, if let's see if I can get that ticker symbol up here. Um, we can look at how the uh, stock responded to this upgrade. And we can see this is another stock that's in a downtrend, but it's having a nice rally. This is a daily price chart. It's up now 5% on the upgrade, but very similar dynamic as far as the RSI poised to turn positive, MACD having that positive crossover, but still negative. And we did in this case as well, find resistance at that downward trending 50 day simple moving average. LPX was another stock that was upgraded today. This one is further along in its downtrend reversal because we can see it's now broken up above each of these key simple moving averages. This green line is your 10 day poised to cross up. We call that a golden cross. That means momentum is improving. The stock is poised to break out of this longer term break base. So certainly healthier looking. Another restaurant stock this is Red Robin Gourmet Burgers, another one that is not participating with the other uh, well-returning restaurant stocks, but it is now gapped up above these key simple moving averages, but generally a not healthy looking chart. Let's move on to these downgrades today. First one is a defense-related stock. DCO is the ticker symbol, and the downgrade is pushing the stock down almost 6%. It's breaking down below this 50-day red simple moving average. RSI is negative. MACD poised to go into negative territory. Another hot area, not so for this stock. MDSO is another stock that was downgraded today. And we can see not a whole lot of reaction. This is a smaller cap stock, not a lot going on there. So let's go ahead and move on to RIG. This is an energy stock that got downgraded. Very much confirmed downtrend. All of your key moving averages trending downward, stock down 4% on that downgrade. So not healthy looking here at all as well. And uh, we can take a look at SPR. This is another defense-related stock that was downgraded today. Huge drop. Stock's down over 6%. We can see the RSI is negative, as is this MACD. Never got off the mat, so to speak, as far as trading up above this net zero. So another stock that is in a very much confirmed downtrend. We have that, uh, instead of the golden cross, we have uh, the bear across uh, this red line going down through the blue. So that's your 50 day simple moving average crossing down uh, through the 200 day, which is the blue. And it is a death cross is the terminology there. And one other downgrade that we can take a look at here, the ticker is WWD. Let's see if we can get that one up. And this is yet another one that is uh, in the aerospace defense area. A little bit of a response. The stock's down about 2.5% on the downgrade, just breaking below that 10-day simple moving average. I would argue the stock is still in a confirmed uptrend. We can see that this RSI is still up above this net neutral 50 in positive territory. And your MACD, while it's having a potential negative crossover, it is above zero in positive territory. So if we were to get more volume on this break, I would be a little more concerned. But for now, the stock does appear to be in okay standing. And that is it for upgrades and downgrades. And we will be right back. Back, I'm going to go ahead now and take a look at what is hot and what is not this week. And I know it's hard to believe I'm going to begin with what's hot. And we're looking at an absolutely ugly chart. 
but it is worth noting this is Kraft Heinz. We're going to start with uh, consumer staple stocks. There are a number of outperformers in that space this week, but I just wanted to point out this stock had this big gap down. The company's had a lot of issues as far as accounting, and uh, they did come out with news this week, and there's a sense that they may be turning things around. Not only that, they've had a problems with their product line not expanding and not staying up with the times. But that said, we are. Uh, this is another one that we are nowhere near reversing this downtrend because all of your key moving averages are heading downward. Despite this gap up, it's still trading below this red 50-day simple moving average. Let's move on and take a look at other names within consumer staples that are quite a bit healthier looking. And this first one is... Uh, an avocado company, and it is Calavo Growers, CVGW, quite a bit healthier looking. This company came out with numbers last week that were very, very strong earnings and sales. We can see the stock is poised to break out of this V-shaped base. So break above this 98, if we were to get that on volume, we can see this is a daily price chart, RS. I and MACD are both positive analysts, are raising uh, their estimates for the stock based on their report last week. This is Elf Beauty. This is a uh, cosmetics company. This is a turnaround story, and we can see this stock is attempting. It's had this double bottom. This second uh, low is at a higher low. Stock is poised to break out of a base here at 13, but analysts raised their price target to $12. We've overcome that, but it is poised to, again, break out of that base. RSI is positive, as is your MACD. Another name in consumer staples, ticker symbol ADM, and this is Archer Daniels. And we can see this stock really has not been participating. There have been a number of super outperformers in consumer staples. Not so this stock, but it is enjoying a bounce this week, attempting to reverse this near-term downtrend. Again, I would need to see the price breaking up above this downward trending 50-day simple moving average. If we could get this green line up through the red with a golden cross, things would certainly look up a bit more for that. Uh, let's move on. Retail. Tom talked about uh, the retail numbers and the revised upward numbers for April. A lot of nice looking charts in the retail space and a lot of stocks are really doing quite well. Restoration hardware, not the most attractive chart. The stock here had a gap down on poor earnings, but just the opposite. Yesterday, this company came out. They broke records with earnings and also with uh, the revenues, operating margins, all breaking records. The stock gapped up tremendously, but it still does have work to do. This is what we've been talking about as far as turnaround attempts. The stock would need to break up above that 200-day simple moving average, but we can see with this big gap up, uh, it would also, uh, it does appear to be a bit near-term extended. Let's take a look at Amazon Bellwether stock. This company is having a very good week. It's up over 3.5%. And good news because this one has broken up positively above each of those key simple moving averages. It had been languishing uh, with the antitrust issues that came out among many of those FANG stocks. And uh, Facebook is having a good day today. So that one is close to reversing. And Amazon is another, uh, some of those other FANG stocks are still struggling. Let's take a look at DLTR. This is a discount retailer. Take a look at this gap up and continuation here. This is all about a JP Morgan upgrade. To uh, They also up their price target to $122. The stock's at about $110 now, and it's poised to break out of this base. There's a lot of good chatter. Analysts really like this stock. We can see the RSI is trending upward. MACD had that positive crossover here and now is entering into bullish positive territory. Another beaten down uh, former winning retail stock that uh, is having a bit of a bounce today. This is Canada Goose. They are the uh, manufacturer and distributor of very high-end outerwear. And this is a gap down. The company came in with light numbers, but they also management guide it much lower. And the street really punished the stock. It's attempting to turn around, but not a, a 
stock that I would even consider, certainly given all this volatility and now the very confirmed downtrend. But on the plus side, let's take a look at a couple of retail discounters that are really have attractive looking charts and they're having good weeks as well. This is Burlington stores. We can see it's now broken up above these key simple moving averages. And then we also have this RSI and MACD in positive territory. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a weekly on this so you can get a better feel for the sense of how this stock really is potentially reversing this downtrend. This is a bullish uh, candle formation two weeks ago that it is continuing on. We can look at another retailer, ROST discounter. And this is another one that is breaking out of about a six week base and it's doing so on pretty good volume. So uh, that is also a having a good week as well, up a couple of a percent. Uh, Foot Locker is a company, a stock that got hit here, another one on earnings. It's just really quite simply trying to reverse this big heavy hit. The, the company came out with uh, poor numbers and another one that really got punished. Uh, let's go ahead and look at one more in this retail space, Williams Sonoma. And this is actually earnings driven as well as the company did come out with good numbers and it is continuing to advance following this gap up. It's poised to break out of a much longer term base in a bullish move. When you see these gaps up on big volume, really pay attention. These are institutions they want in. The stock pulled back very orderly and is having another gap up on es estimate upgrades. And I believe I have uh, time for one more in this retail space. And this company is, uh, for those of you familiar with the UGG boots, Australian uh, related, and we can see that this stock is Decker's, D-E-C-K, and the stock is really, uh, was upgraded yesterday. It's trading at about 175, and there's a price target out there now for 189. I would argue the stock is a bit extended. It's well above this 10 day simple moving average. And it's also overbought when this RSI gets up here above 70, but otherwise it does appear to be in a confirmed uptrend. I would look for a pullback before considering enter. So Tom, I'm gonna, hand it over and let you review some other names. Sounds good. I'm going to stick with that theme. I think you're you're hitting the nail on the head there, Mary Ellen, consumer discretionary retail. I mean, this has definitely been an area that's hot. This is a one-week chart uh, or one-week uh, sector summary. And you can see from this uh, layout here, this table, consumer discretionary up more than 2% in the last week. Closest to them would be the communication services group, less than 1%. So that is definitely where the money has been rolling. I did want to bring up the XRT because with that uh, retail sales report this morning, we did get a gap up, but we've been rising the last five days. I think there are a couple of things to watch on this chart. Um, we did break back up above the 20 day moving average, which I like. Um, you can't really get into an uptrend until you get above your 20 day moving average. We had been in that downtrend. So I think that was at least the start of something good here. But I think the overhead resistance here closer to 43 and a half is going to be something uh, that we're going to have to deal with if we can get up that far. Uh, there were a lot of times we came down, tested 43 and a half from above. And then you can see this gap down on very heavy volume. We opened just below 43 and a half. And that's where all the selling uh, or a lot of the big selling really began in May. And now we're working our way back up. So it's been a great week for the for the group. But I think we got a lot more work to do. As far as some of the individual stocks within consumer discretionary, these are not I know uh, um, Mary Ellen touched on a lot of the retail stocks, but I'm going to go into some other areas within the consumer discretionary space. Let's start with Corn Ferry, KFY. Um, I'm going to bring these up on a relative chart. Maybe we can take a look at that as well. But here you can see Corn Ferry been uh, really strong so far in June, the last week especially, moving up probably about 4 or 5%. Um, on a relative basis, relative to its peer peers, starting to move a little bit better to the upside, but still its peers relative to the S&P struggling. So not sure how much we're going to get out of this, but what I would be watching for is to see if we can get this neckline. If we can clear about 49, 49 and a half, I think that could be a better longer term signal on KFY. Um, RHI, this is Robert Half, uh, another stock that's had a really good week, but doesn't look so great on the chart. 
Um, we did get above the 20 day yesterday, but it looks like unless we recover this afternoon, we're going to give that right back. I don't like to see that. And you can see this is a stock that has been lagging its group for quite a while. Next up, Big Lots. This is one of those uh, retailers, BIG. Coming up, had a really strong week, but it's trying to get through its 20-day moving average. So I would say at this point, it's nothing more than a dead cat bounce. If we roll back over and can't hold this double bottom just below 26, that would be bad news for Big. Vips, V-I-P-S. Uh, this is another broadline retailer. Moving down, it looks like that downtrend may have been broken, but again, you've got a stock. It's not really showing a whole lot of relative strength. Uh, reached a high maybe about six weeks ago. If we could get back up and make a breakout, relative breakout, that would be great. I think this one's got a little bit of uh, uh, overhead issues to deal with. Macy's, uh, looking at the chart, you're going to see the same thing. Moving up above the 20, yes, it's been a good week, but look at the relative strength on Macy's. It's been horrible. So failure to hold that 20-day moving average would be plenty enough to keep me out of the stock or to get me out if I'm in it. FND, Floor and Decor Holdings. This is in the home improvement space. Not only are we moving up, but we're trying to clear that 20-day moving average. Home improvements are moving up. So far, not a lot of relative strength, though, in this particular chart. Home Depot. Home Depot having a really nice week. I think off of this uptrend, this is really starting to look a lot like a cup to me. Uh, left side of the cup coming down, nice rounded bottom. And when you're in the downtrend, this is what I, I talk about that, that really matters for me. You got to get back through that 20 day moving average to break that downtrend. The overall trend here is higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low. Another breakout here above this 205, 206 area, I think would be very bullish for Home Depot. Whirlpool, WHR, having a solid week, extending the earlier uh, strength that we saw to start June. Uh, nice little reversing candle off of the bottom there. Got a lot of work to do here, but we are beginning to show some nice relative strength versus its peers. And uh, Helen of Troy, H-E-L-E. -E. This one, uh, beautiful move up. I'm pretty sure that was earnings related. Tested the overhead resistance, couldn't get through, pulled back. I think we're beginning to see this uh, uh, uptrend continue now. Uh, I, you know, Down at the bottom, I think that uh, the top of gap support around 125 would be major support on this stock. I don't even think we get back down there on this move. I'd look for a breakout, and I think a, a close over 145 would be very bullish. Two internet stocks I just wanted to bring up because internet, even though it had been weak, uh, didn't have a bad week this week. So we had a nice run up. I think we've got a nice little flag in play here for NetEase. Watch for a breakout above 270. It did this past week, earlier this week, move to a multi-month relative high to the internet group. So if internet starts to turn higher and this relative strength uh, continues, I think we'll get a breakout and NetEase could be a winner going forward. Watch that one. Last one is Yandex, YNDX. I just love this pattern. And this is one that just broke out to a new 52-week relative low. The only thing holding this stock back, in my opinion, is the internet group itself because the group has been so weak relative to the S&P 500 for the last six weeks. If we get a strong group, I think this is a stock that makes a breakout, could be a leader in this space. So I'd keep an eye on this one, YNDX. All right, uh, we are going to now move over to Mary Ellen. There are still some more of what's hot. What else you have, Mary Ellen? Yeah, there are. And actually, you pulled up some beautiful charts there, I have to say. Uh, we're going to stick here with some consumer related again. And I talked about those restaurant stocks really outpacing the broader markets. But actually, let's begin with some of these gambling stocks. We're looking at Wynn Resorts. And there was a bullish report out of Macau regarding their uh, gambling as far as their attendance and so forth. Jeffries came out with a very bullish report. So we're seeing a couple of these gambling related stocks bounce. And of course, this is relative to other stocks we've been viewing today where the, it is in a confirmed uptrend and has quite a bit in the way of work to do before reversing it. But MGM is another gambling stock that is a bit closer to turning bullish as far as the chart. We can see the stock has already broken up above these key simple moving averages. When you have these downward trending moving averages, this is blue is the 200 day, the red is the 50. You're going to need at least in this case, we're seeing that green 10 day simple moving average crossing up above 
And when that occurs, ideally, it will in turn pull these longer term key moving averages up, thereby now acting as support instead of upside resistance. So we can see that MGM is potentially in the throes of reversing this downtrend, a breakout of this base at about 20 eight and a half would be a nice continuation of the bullishness. So moving on to some of these restaurant stocks, Starbucks has really been on Mary, a tear. Mary Ellen, yes. yes. I want to interrupt you for one minute. I'm going to, I'm going to steal your screen because I know what's going on with the gambling stocks. Oh yeah. Okay. The other month I wrote an article, don't gamble on this industry. Mm -hmm. And so that was, that was the gambling <laughs> stocks. That's great. So, yeah, if you come down in uh, the sector, I saw the breakdown here. So I was writing about not wanting to be in those gambling stocks in June. So I think I pretty much marked the bottom. I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> you are so funny. Well, I will say as a whole, there are not a lot of attractive stocks in that space. So I would argue that you were spot on. Um, right. You have it back. Go ahead and grab that screen. Oh, you bet. Yeah. So I was going to, in fact, the stocks that I'm going to be reviewing now, I had written about last weekend in the mar uh Chart Watchers weekly, now weekly report. For those of you that are not subscribers, I would urge you. It has wonderful contributors outside of myself that uh, put out names and stocks and groups. And this was one of the names that I talked about last week, Starbucks. The stock is really in a confirmed uptrend. Management came out and talked about their huge growth opportunities in China. And as, as coffee goes, China, they are big tea drinkers. I believe on average, they only drink four cups of coffee per year. So hence the big growth prospects there, uh, but also just due to look, uh, continuing expansion as far as locations and so forth. So we can see the stock is in a confirmed uptrend RSI, MACD are quite positive. And another name that I uh, talked about last weekend in that Market Watchers report is Duncan Brands, DNKN. This is another stock that is in a very confirmed uptrend. It does appear to be base building after having a significant two week advance. The company is expanding locations beyond their Northeast flagship locations. The stock's a little bit overbought with this RSI up here above 70, and but your MACD is quite positive. So upon a period of basing, I would look for a potential another leg up on this stock. And one last one in the restaurant space, space is Shake Shack. And this is another one. Now, it is in this confirmed uptrend. By that, I mean we have this 10-day simple moving average trending upward. Theoretically, it can act as support as the stock continues to advance. But it's another one that's also a little bit overbought. It's up, you can see RSI up here above 70. Just eyeing it, the stock's price is advanced above that 10-day, so it does look extended, but very much in a confirmed uptrend. We can take a look at finance stocks, some payment processing. And this is an area that has been very vibrant. Uh, this first one is Pay Sign, P A Y S, one of the smaller names in this group. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a weekly price chart here so that you can get a better sense because the stock is up 17%, uh, but again, very much in an uptrend on the weekly, the RSI is overbought. It can stay overbought for some period of time, but I would expect similar to this other big gap up, oftentimes stocks will mark time, pull back to this 50 day in this case, or 10 week simple moving average. So it is a bit extended. Another one in this area that I have been keeping my eye on, just waiting for it to pick up is Square. Let's go ahead and go to a daily for this one. And this is, of course, a mobile payment processor. And it's, it has not been participating really in a downtrend, but it is trying to reverse. And again, I would like to see that, or I would need to see the price break up above that 200 day simple moving average on volume. We can see on this daily, the RSI is positive, MACD is positive as well. But again, a breakup above that on volume would bode well. And then again, we can see, look out for that shorter term 10 day simple moving average to go ahead and cross up. Uh, one area that I do want to take a look at or at least share with you that's been hot this week are the airline stocks. This is American Airlines very much in a 
confirmed downtrend, but they did report very good. Uh, they had fair increases that are being certainly not well received, but there's not a lot of pushback. So their increase in fair. JetBlue also came out with news uh, as far as their May load factor. That's uh, the number of passengers has improved. And this stock certainly is a bit more constructive looking. I'm going to pull up the weekly here to give you a better sense that this is breaking out of this eight week base and it's doing so on volume. So very, very constructive. It is up 6%. Uh, I would wait for a pullback before considering it. And I can leave it at that. All right, I am going to go ahead and start us off on what has not been hot. So let's start off again, looking at that sector summary, because that's an easy way to just take a quick uh, a gander and see what has not been participating. So if we look back over this last week, you'll see that the industrials and energy stocks, of course, crude, in, crude got hit. It's been a little volatile of late for sure. But uh, these are the two areas, along with technology, that are showing the most weakness over the past week. So I'm going to start off with uh, railroads because I think the railroad group, you can see it's been down almost every day this week. But I think that we're getting a nice little reversal right off this price support area. And if I go back and we take a look at the relative strength of railroads versus the S&P 500. And I want to go back maybe a couple of years here so you can really get a sense of what this group has been doing. This relative pullback, I think, is just like these others where we pulled back and then we take off again. So I think this pullback is actually a nice opportunity in the railroad space. But let's pull up some of the individual charts and see what those are showing us. First, uh, Norfolk Southern. Norfolk Southern also like the overall um, index you can see right back down near the support that was established at the end of May. So tight stop could go in here. I, I, I like it at the current price. Maybe a target up around 205 to 210 um, and a very, very tight stop. A close below about 194, 193 would probably do it for me. Next up, UNP. This is Union Pacific. Another one. Check this out. Same thing. Pulling back, hitting the support level. Um, and if we look at the uh, relative strength, of the of some of these uh, charts, you can see UMP is has not been one of the better ones, um, and I think NSC was better than UNP on a yeah NSC here on a relative basis has been much stronger. So they're both hitting support, but I actually like NSC better because of the relative strength versus the group. Uh, but again, they're both you know testing some key support. Next up is aerospace. Um, aerospace, um, you know, really struggling with uh seems like ever since the we had the merger between raytheon and united technologies aerospace has struggled so of course united technologies has taken a hit uh we can pull up and see we're bouncing back off that earlier low i had earlier written about this support area around 121 122 i think that's the level that needs to hold i don't want to go back below that march low so so far we're holding there we'll see if we can get back through the 20-day moving average uh, Boeing also having a really rough uh, time of it, as you can see here. Uh, tough week back below the 20-day moving average. Nothing good there. And then SPR, which is uh, Spirit Aerosystems, making a big move down today, possibly breaking down to another big low. This is a stock that's been in free fall on a relative basis as well, now to 52-week low versus the aerospace group. So not only is it making an absolute breakdown, but on a relative basis, it's been a not a very good performer either. Um, as far as energy goes, let's pull up some of the pipeline stocks. The pipelines have been one of the bright spots in energy, but check out Enbridge. After moving up, little shooting star candle, false breakout. The last two or three weeks have not been good here, making breaks not just below moving averages and recent lows, but we could go back to the what I think is pretty important low here at about three, 34 and a half, and we lost that a couple of days ago. So this stock... On big volume, losing some key support levels, not looking very good. KMI, this is Kinder Morgan. Kinder Morgan. Now, this one, I think, on a relative basis, looks much better. So, yes, it's also having a bad week, but it's got price support sitting at about 20 and a half. The rising 20-day moving average just below 20 and a half, and the price of the stock sitting at about 20 and a half. Volume trends much different here. Um, supporting the move to the upside, lesser to the downside. So, between the two... They're both going down, but I think KMI looks a lot better technically on the chart. 
Uh, WMB, which is Williams Companies, another one rolling over at the 50-day, moving back below the 20, which is below the 50, and another stock that on a relative basis just not been a very good performer. Moving on to oil equipment and services, I just have uh, maybe one or two here. Let's take a look first at Rig. Um, this is Transocean. Uh, this has just been a – this could be a ski slope here. Uh, it's been moving down heavy volume, not just on an absolute basis, but relative. Why own a stock? Even before this went into this slide, I think you can see that this is a stock that was not a leader in the group. may not have been the worst stock in the group, but it certainly wasn't one of the leaders. And so no reason to be in during a decline like this. And then the final one is GTLS, which is Chart Industries. I would be watching this support level. Big volume came in on the buying or the, the holding of support here the last couple of days. But we have not gotten back up above the 20-day. The relative strength on this one is different than Rig, though. You can see this has been a leader. Volume's coming in. Be careful if it loses that support level. All right, what do you have for uh, your what's not hot stocks this week, Mary Ellen? Yeah, interestingly, I have to say it was not easy to find a lot of stocks that were down. And in particular, as far as trying to uncover themes, because I find that to be quite a bit more helpful rather than just throwing out random stocks. But we can go ahead and get started with a couple of healthcare stocks that are down this week. And the first one is a well-known name, Eli Lilly. And we can see that the stock, we're looking at a weekly price chart. And the stock really had suffered in general during this May, March, April period when a number of these healthcare stocks got hit. This week, the stock is down almost 6%. And it has everything to do with a study that came out actually late last week, but analysts are really uh, digging into it this week. Here's a daily price chart. We can see this break down below this key 200 day simple moving average. Uh, they have a diabetic drug and they came out with very in-depth notes regarding their, uh, their transitioning of this drug and it's going through various channels and the results were not that great. Analysts were not impressed. So now we can see this stock breaking down even further and we are getting some significant volume. Your RSI is negative as is your MACD that never really got positive but we have that black line down down through the red. So uh, Eli Lilly certainly looks headed for further downside. We can look at another one in healthcare, ABMD, another larger name, Biomed. And this is a stock that really never uh, recovered from this fall down that we saw in a number of healthcare stocks here, March, April, with the policy political headwinds that were occurring. The stock did attempt to reverse, but was denied. And we can see the stock is continuing to slip here. We're looking at a daily price chart. This RSI is now in negative territory. And your MACD, again, here never really got positive and now has had that negative uh, black line through the red. One other larger name that we can look at in healthcare is Allergon, A-G-N, uh, another one hit with that general healthcare malaise, but really getting hit again further. And all of your key moving averages, I've talked about this, this is your 200 day, the blue, the red is your 50, the 10 day is the green, all heading south. And what tends to happen, we can go back here historically, of course, this was a tough period in the market, but it still is a good way to view when these downtrending moving averages, the stock attempts to rally, and these moving averages now become resistance as opposed to support. Let's take a look at a couple of consumer stocks that are getting hit this week. These are uh, home furnishings, HOFT. Take a look at this big gap down earlier in the week. The stock's down yet another 5%. So really just confirming this downtrend, really hitting a stock when it's down. This is all about negative earnings. We can look at DKS. This is one of the few last standing sporting goods retailers, big box, another one that just cannot get out of its own way. This is uh, Dick's Sporting Goods very negative looking chart. Your MACD down here below zero, RSI is negative. Uh, I did wanna take a look and share with you uh, Netflix because Netflix is having a, a tough week here. And of these bang stocks, it really has not been very vibrant of late. So we can see it's really 
down about 6%. All about competition, because if you look, just show you a comparison, but uh, you'll see a stark contrast when looking at a company like Disney that is in the same space. And Disney is quite a bit more constructive looking as opposed to that Netflix. One last retailer that was negative for the week is Dave and Buster's. And this is another earnings related big drop here. Huge volume. The stock's down 18% for the week. So the, street, the market's really punishing the stock. And when we see this big volume, you can clearly anticipate that this stock is going to have a very, very tough time reversing that big downtrend. And that's it for what's not hot. All right, uh, here is your summary of many of the areas that we just covered. Um, great job, Mary Ellen, as always. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, you're welcome. And we're going to head on over to the 10 in 10. So we're going to start off. The first stock today is going to be American Express. You can see that on your screen here. I actually put in a couple of things here. Number one, I, I, the chart looks great. I mean, when you're looking at the absolute chart, Beautiful move to the upside, just recently broke out. And notice when we broke out back in April above this double top around 114, where did we finally bottom? Right at that 114 level, right at the 50-day moving average, and then we started moving back up again. So I think that is uh, almost beautiful, uh, kind of perfect technical um, conditions, you know, there where you get a pullback, you hit, you know, combination of things where you're looking for a, a move back to the upside, you're at price support, you got a moving average, and then you make that push. The pullback here, I think, also has been pretty orderly this week. We did put in a shooting star candle off of this uptrend. I would have been expecting a pullback. The uh, recent breakout was about 121 or 120 and a half. So I think going back and testing that level is fine. One problem with this chart, and that is as I go down, it's in a great group. It is outperforming. This stock, uh, American Express, is outperforming the S&P, and the group is wi wildly outperforming the S&P. But American Express is not one of the best stocks within its group. So I would be looking at this saying, yes, it looks good. If I owned it, maybe I continue to hold it. It's a big company. I feel comfortable with it. But it has not been one of the better performers within the space. So I like American Express, but I think you probably could do better with other stocks within its industry. Very good. The next one is an ETF, I-N-D-A. All right, the India ETF. India. Um, yeah, I, I, let me switch it over to a different chart. Um, yeah, this is, uh, you know, not bad. I'm going to go back two years so we can take kind of a little bit bigger picture view. Um, we did get a false breakout above the recent highs, so coming across here. You see this gap? Actually, I could maybe even just draw this as a big gap resistance area. So they see the heavy volume in early February 2018 and that big gap down. We Every time we get up and test the bottom of this or even the top of the range, we roll back over. We did go back below the 20-day moving average. So that gives me a little bit of concern. I would maybe take a, a look at perhaps an area like 3450, where it's been a key pivot before. You can see the lows here. You can see the gap down here. So as we went back up above, I'm thinking 3450 could hold. So maybe just to make it a little bit more appealing to the eye, let's get rid of this line. And I think we're in a trading range right now. I'd say 3450 downside, maybe even just drag that up just so that we can cover that high. But 3650 upside, let's see which way it breaks to the, you know, which way we go to the upside or the downside. I'm kind of on a fence here. I believe global markets are eventually going higher, so I would tend to be bullish. But if I was looking for that confirmation, it would be the breakout over 3650. Very good. Next one is Constellation Brands. It's STZ. Yeah, this was a stock that was hit with uh, many of the stocks in the space when uh, President Trump announced the 5% tariff on uh, Mexico. Of course, you know they got a lot of products that they ship out of Mexico. So uh, that was a big problem here, as you can see with this drop. We've since come back up, tested the moving averages. I think we've got to get through overhead resistance between uh, 195 and 200. And until we do that, I'm not going to be interested in the stock. So there's the recent high, and there was a breakdown below the prior low. So right here, see that low? And then when we broke down and, and made that move down, look at the volume pick up. So I think 200 is your price resistance. I think, well, 
is the price resistance price resistance established by that breakdown. And then I think your reaction high also establishes a price resistance. I'm looking at 195 to 200. Notice the 50-day moving average is right in the middle there. I wouldn't be too interested until I get through all of that congestion. Right. The next one is a healthcare stock that has stood up against the uh, downtrend in the mark in the uh, group. It's ENSG. Yeah, I want to go back into a relative chart because this thing really has been a great performer. I wanted to point this out. So you can see the stock in May making a breakout. It's part of the healthcare providers group that has been in a downtrend for six months. So there is no doubt that when you're looking at healthcare providers, this has been one of the best stocks. The only problem is that the group has been downtrending uh, versus the S&P 500. So the stock's been an outperformer, even though it's in a group that's been an underperformer. I think that bodes well for the stock going forward. I like it. If I was going to own a healthcare type stock, this is the type of stock that I would be interested in. So if I just uh, look at the chart pattern itself, I think off of this uptrend, I think we could maybe be looking at something like a cup forming off of the uptrend, maybe a pullback. But right now we're holding that 20 day moving average. I think this is a bullish pattern in an overall bullish chart. The one thing I would just say is this, when you get a stock that is in a weak group, but it's been a very good stock. I kind of pick my line in the sand. And if it doesn't hold, then I get out because the overall group is weak. So if a stock in that group breaks down, you really don't want to be a part of it. So I would be using maybe around 52. I think as long as it holds 52, ENSG looks pretty good. Well said. EYE is the next one. It's a specialty retailer. All right. Uh, let's see. Volume's picked up a little bit here. Now, this has not been a good stock, but it's beginning to show relative strength. So this is one where if I was taking a chance and I was a bottom feeder, I would maybe be looking at, at a couple of key areas of support if I got into it. And if that was taken out, no excuses. So I think you've got major gap support here. This is where the volume came in, where we gapped up. We pulled back. We held that rising 20-day moving average. We've got gap support. That's going to be around 27 and a half. I would not be in this stock if it loses 27 and a half because of this long term relative underperformance among specialty retailers. This stock's been going down, even though the group has been going up and has been one of the leaders in the market. Look at the relative strength on specialty retail. So if the stock starts to lose technical support levels, I make no excuses here. So EYE, I could make an argument, but I would say this. Watch it closely and make sure you keep your stop in play. All right. Next one is a computer software, WDAY. Yeah, I love it. Workday. Mm -hmm. uh, work, uh, well, first of all, software is one of my favorite areas of the market. We talk about this on the show all the time. I think you've got a number of different things you can look at, but look at the relative strength. All of these charts pointing up from left to right. That's how you beat the S&P 500 by owning more and more of these types of companies. I think uh, from a trend line perspective, you could certainly watch the uh, trend line that's been established, maybe even going back here. Uh, we've had multiple tests along this trend line, probably could drag that and maybe look for you know highs when we get back up, say, to the 230, 240 area. That, uh, that channel may be tested to the upside. But overall, I think this has been a really strong stock within one of the best uh, groups in the market. So. I can't say too many positive things here. I think Workday looks great. Very good. Next one is Goldfields, GFI. Yeah, gold having a really good day, by the way. Um, yeah. Gold fields breaking out. Look at the volume coming in. It'd be hard to argue against this. Relative strength looks good across the board here. So let's draw a couple lines. First, the big uh, breakout occurred above this February top, which would be 440. So if we were to go through a period of weakness, I think probably we would hold at that rising 20-day moving average on the first test. I think you've also got some key gap supports. I'll put it in here just temporarily so you can see it like that gap right there on very heavy volume, I think could provide some support. Actually, I'll just go ahead and leave that. I think the 440 to about 470 area is where I would think about getting in if it pulled back. Uh, always hard to chase a stock because it just you're taking a lot more risk when it's in a uh, move like this to the upside and overbought, but can't argue with the action here in the volume. I mean, I think the stock looks really good. 
Great. And then tandem diabetes, TNDM, it's having a tough week and a tough day. Yeah, it had a tough uh, day maybe a week or so ago. Mm -hmm. um, I bounced off of that um, yeah. back up, and now it's trying to you know back down again. I would say that the 60, 65 area is where it's been holding, but I'm going to take an even bigger picture because what I've, you know, we've looked at tandem in the past and unfortunately it's a very volatile stock. So I think the breakout occurred at about 52. It ran all the way up to 75 in about three weeks right here. And we went back and tested that area. I just think we're in sideways consolidation mode. I mean, I know that's not too helpful if you're in the stock at $64 and you're thinking, well, what if it goes all the way down to 52? But I do think that is the sideways consolidation that's been established after this huge move to the upside. I mean, you have to remember, this stock was down under $30 in November and ran to 75. So if you're going to be in a stock like this, especially one for the long term or longer term, I think you've got to be willing to, to let this volatility play out. I believe we're going to get a breakout in the stock before we get a breakdown. But... Uh, that's a lot. That's a wide trading range, and you got to have a strong stomach uh, for these moves back and forth. Okay, we have another gold related GDX. Yeah, GDX, uh, that is the uh, miners ETF. Uh, I'll pull that on a regular chart here. But yeah, we're getting a breakout and seeing a lot of this in gold. Um, and the, bit, the surprising thing about it is that the dollar has been rising this week and it's having a pretty good day today. Normally you, you see money rotating away from gold when that happens. So that'll be something to see. Is it really just a head fake in the dollar to the upside or is it a, a, a false breakout in some of these this gold? I think it could be maybe just a little false move on the dollar. I think the dollar could weaken again here. Um, so I, I would be paying attention to these breakouts. I think GDX making a really nice breakout here. If this holds, I think it's got potentially a little bit more room to run here. Okay, and then the last one is Encana, and it's ECA.TO. Yeah, I know this has not been a good one. Yeah. Yep, ski slope, um, you know, a little slalom, go up here, <laughs> back down. Uh, but the overall move clearly is to the downside. Let's take a look at a longer term. Let me go back a couple of years and see if we can find some support because we broke down. No, I mean, this is just in breakdown mode, um, and this is a classic uh, bearish wedge that broke. So let me show you the bearish wedge. So here are your highs coming across here. And then here are your lows. You see this piece of pie basically squeezing. There's your downtrend. Here's your bearish wedge. When that breaks, that is not a good sign for a stock or an, any, or an index ETF, whatever. Um, you know, I know Arthur writes about these a lot in his blog, but uh, this bearish wedge here broke back at the end of April, and it's been straight down since. I can't see anything attractive about this at this point from a technical perspective. I'd stay away. And that is the 10 in 10. You can Very see good. Uh, stocks I just covered on your screen. They will be included in the uh, Market Watchers Live blog later today. We'll be back right after this message. Market direction is the single most important thing all investors need to know. Get the advice you need by joining dozens of elite money managers and financial experts, including Steve Forbes, Paul Merriman, Tom McClellan, and Keith Fitzgerald at the Money Show Seattle June 15th and 16th. You'll hear real-time market analysis and learn which stocks, bonds, funds, and commodities you should buy and sell to build a safer, more profitable portfolio. Claim your free pass at seattlemoneyshow.com. All right, taking a look at the market today, we see that the Dow Jones Industrial Average currently down 39 points, the S&P 500 down 7, the NASDAQ down 41, the Russell 2000 down 11, so still not a whole lot of progress from when we started the show. 10-year Treasury yield is down a bit more, I think, uh, down closer to 2.08%. Volatility continues just to drift sideways. Utilities leading along with real estate mentioned this opening. Uh, that's not unusual when the market's down to see defensive groups uh, outperforming technology and now energy. I think earlier I showed uh, industrials in that second spot to the downside, but energy is all of a sudden losing momentum. And you can see it's at that 20 day moving average, which is not a good sign to see the XLE rolling over there. Home construction continues to have a really strong day breaking out above these prior highs. Also wanted to show you the, uh, the, um, 
um, precious metals here, gold miners uh, moving higher and breaking out on the day. So this is a pretty good development here. Nice move up, a little bit of a flag and a breakout. Semiconductors continue to be the, the uh, area of the market that is keeping things down, especially the NASDAQ. Broadcom, horrible, big gap down, but it does still have that hollow candle, meaning that we have seen some buyers since the open. And then finally, you can see the GLD, which tracks gold, making a breakout to a new high. I think that we go higher. And the reason I say that is when you look at the dollar, uh, the dollar had been in this downtrend. We're getting a little bit of a move to the upside. If we break out, then I maybe would have to reevaluate. But I think maybe we have a down sloping head and shoulder, left shoulder, neckline, head, lower neckline, which I think is more bearish. I think this could simply be the dollar putting in the right side of a neck or a right side of a shoulder in a head and shoulder pattern. So if we go back down and lose 26, that would be a big bullish development for gold. We'll have to see whether or not that plays out. A breakout above this 2650, 26, uh, 2647, whatever it is. Um, a breakout there would negate the pattern. So keep that in mind. Okay, we are going to move on to our next segment today. And that is the um, watch your stop. So uh, Mary Ellen, and, and for those of you that are new, essentially what we're doing is we're just going to take a look at some stocks that you want to be careful with. If, um, you know, maybe they're in a not so good group, maybe they're at the 50 day and they've been holding the 50 day for many months and possibly, you know, on the verge of a, of a breakdown, you just want to be careful with these stocks. So I'm going to let you start it off. Mary Ellen, what do you have? Yeah, for you bet. The first name that we're going to take a look at was a big winner earlier in the year, fell out of favor in the beginning of May, certainly with the broader markets malaise. This is Carvana CVNA, and we can see it's a specialty retailer. This nice big uptrending period from February into this beginning of May. The stock did break down below this 10-day simple moving average found support at this 50, but we can see a pickup in the volume, certainly relative to historical standards. So when you see that pickup in volume and it breaks key uh, support, certainly a warning sign. And we can see the stock attempted to reverse back up above that shorter term 10-day found resistance at a downward trending 10-day simple moving average. Take a look at this second break down below the 50-day. And again, we're seeing a pickup here in the volume. So really quite simply just eyeing a stock. When you see the higher volume days on your down days, that is a red flag. The stock is trying to reverse this downtrend here, but here it is finding support at this flat trend, uh, flat 50 day simple moving average. So I would just, uh, if you hung on to this stock, uh, be a little bit leery. Your RSI is down here below this 50. And let's go ahead and scroll down uh, to your MACD. It's also now down in negative territory. So your near term prognosis is not particularly healthy. I would need to see a break up above that 50 on big volume with your other indicators trending positive as well to know that this downtrending period has potentially been uh, reversed. All right. Do you have others or is that? Oh, uh, oh yes. I thought we were going back and forth. Forgive yeah, me. Yeah, go right ahead. Go ahead. And <laughs> I shall carry on. Uh, yeah. So a couple of other names that we can look at. Uh, Lululemon just came out with earnings and we can see that the stock price had it had very good action yesterday where it uh, traded up reached a new high that's very very bullish on huge volume so generally speaking lululemon is in very good standing um, but we are going to want to go back here historically to this end of may period look at this break below that 50 day on big volume so i would need to see this stock continue to find support at these now upward trending simple moving averages, your RSI is positive. Let's go ahead and take a look at this MACD because during periods when a stock just kind of underperforms or pulls back, you'll see your MACD just going down into this zero. But in this case, it broke below in a negative fashion. But now we are poised to trend positively. We had that black line up through the red. So we are poised to uh, 
continue and trade positively, but I would just keep your eye on this action around these simple moving averages. We can also take a look at a number of uh, software stocks while they remain in uptrends. Uh, they are getting a little uh, slippage this week, if you will, for lack of a better word. Let's pull up Ring, RNG, Ring Central. This stock has been a, ultimately a really big winner here. Net-net, uh, your uptrend is in place, but let's take a look at what is happening this week. This is Monday. The stock did break below this shorter term 10-day simple moving average. We can see the RSI is trending negatively. It's down now below that 50. Your MACD has been trending. I talked about this earlier. When a stock pulls back, your MACD gets into that area of zero. But if we see a break below here in line with this RSI, certainly a break below this 50, uh, it, it, I would just be near-term cautious. The other thing when you're looking at stocks, regardless of what group they're in, or uh, you want to look at the stock historically. How does it behave around this key 50-day? And we can see Ring Central has been able to undercut and then recover. So it's certainly not the end of the stock's uptrend, but it is worth noting that there is a bit of heaviness with some of these uh, software stocks. So let's take a look at another software stock that has been a big winner. Uh, actually not much to worry about here at all. This is Paycom. I uh, certainly can pull up certainly better examples, but again, we are seeing uh, a little bit of heaviness here. Just uh, be, be aware because we are seeing a little bit of a pickup in volume, all in good standing. Currently, we are fine, but uh, something to keep an eye on. Let's take a look at another stock that uh, this particular name is in the defense related. And I just wanted to point this one out because um, I'm trying to think if we reviewed this earlier, but the point is that uh, the stock is building a base and it's actually net net looking quite constructive. Uh, I was more concerned with the fact that it's not participating with the number of other defense related stocks that are really doing quite well, the RSI is poised to turn negative, but for now we are in good standing. Uh, let's just take a look at one other software stock so that uh, we can see how it's doing, but also key in on historical. And this one is in an uptrend. Tom, I don't think I'm playing this game very well. <laughs> I keep pulling up these stocks and they're just looking fine. Uh, but we can certainly look at this uh, from a broader perspective and kind of pull the lens uh, away, if you will. This is something I talked about earlier, looking at a stock. This is Shopify, SHOP, big winning stock year to date. Uh, we can see that this stock historically can break that 10 day simple moving average and really just do fine and recover. So maybe just using this chart as a historical reference that when you own a stock, uh, stocks do tend to have what I like to call a personality. And uh, this one, if it does undercut the 10, it's not the end of the world. It could very easily uh, bounce back. Yeah, I've got uh, I got a few here that I'll go okay. ahead. <laughs> um, I've got uh, UTHR, which is United Therapeutics Corp. Now, this stock's been in a downtrend for a while. So you might say, well, of course, you know, I want to keep a stop here. But the, the point is, before I, <clears throat> excuse me, before I get into a couple of stocks, that I think are at key levels now. I just wanted to point out that when you get to a stock that takes out a, a support level like this one did back in December, and you start seeing the volume pick up like this, I see no reason whatsoever why you wouldn't have your stop in play. And notice, since we continued moving down, this 20-day uh, moving average has been overhead resistance uh, for sure. But take a look at the relative strength here on UTHR. So not only where we starting to, to break down below moving averages, short-term support, intermediate-term support. But we also had a stock that was not performing well within a group that was not performing well. So you put all this together and you absolutely want to make sure you keep your stop in play on a stock like uh, UTHR. Um, LOGM. <clears throat> LOGM, this is another one. Look at all of these support, this support level and how many times we tested 75 on LOGM. It is in a group that has been doing pretty well. Look at the relative strength of the stock within its group. Horrible. So when you lose a key support level like this, 
$75, there is no reason to continue holding a stock like this. You've got a weak performer, and the group is just kind of okay versus the S&P 500, but you've got a weak performer, and it's breaking to new lows. Again, make sure you watch your stop. Uh, one more, I think, that maybe will uh, explain <clears throat> you know, the importance here. Here we break down below this triple bottom. We do show a little bit of rel or, uh, absolute strength, but notice the relative strength doesn't pick up. The only reason we got a little bit of a, a bounce here was because software was moving so strongly to the upside. So it was a rising tide lifts all boats kind of a thing. But as software has continued trying to make a relative or a, an absolute breakout, look at what's been going on here with NTNX. When you see the relative strength go straight down like this, breaking to 52-week lows, and you lose key price support levels, to me, it's time to uh, make sure you keep your stop in play. Um, I'm going to do just two more. One is, and these are more recent, you know, the ones I'd be looking at right now. RYAAY, you look at the airline group. Do you see the relative weakness here? It's at a 52-week well, relative low to the group. The group is not exactly a very strong group. And here we are right near this prior low back in January, trying to hang on at 65. If I see a, a breakdown here at 65, I would definitely have my stop in play. No chances on a stock like RYAAY. And then the last one here is CRZO. And once again, you got the whole thing lined up where on an absolute basis and a relative basis, you've just got a dog. And when you've got a dog and it starts to bark, like this one has been doing this week, breaking down below $10, you got to let it go. Uh, this was a breakdown. I think that you want to keep your stop in play. And even if you're a value investor, if you're looking at it and saying, well, you know, we've been holding this $10 level. This is the lowest the stock's been in such and such period of time. When it breaks down, there's no telling how low a stock will go. All you have to do is go back and look at GE's chart. Because I know that there, were an there was analyst after analyst after analyst that was trying to call the bottom in GE. And it just kept going lower and lower and lower. I don't try to be that hero. So here is our summary for the watch your stop. Um, and we are going to move into the what would you do? And just a quick reminder, if you haven't already uh, gone in and taken that poll, we're going to look at the at the semiconductor group. So we know that semiconductors have been under fire really all throughout May. Uh, trade war talk, the whole situation with Huawei. Um, all of that has led to a group that has just not been very good. Last night, Broadcom comes out with their quarterly earnings report, and they say it's you know we've got broad-based demand issues in the group looking out. Uh, so they they lowered their outlook, they missed their revenue estimates, and so Mary Ellen, here is the what would you do? Semiconductors, given all the weakness we saw in May, given the gap down today. What would you do? Would you be a buyer into this weakness? Would you uh, just be holding? If you're already into some, would you just be holding? Or would you just be outright selling here? What do you think with semiconductors? And grab the yeah. screen and, and show whatever you want to oh, show. Oh, okay. You bet. I can do that. And I would just say right off the bat, I would not be a buyer at this uh, point in time. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And basically what we have seen here with semiconductor stocks is from peak to trough it did it did hit bear market status it was down 20 percent so here's uh the iShares philly semiconductor group index and so from peak to trough 20 percent and really i was viewing this bounce as a uh, attempt to reverse kind of a bear market bounce we can see it made it right up to this 50-day simple moving average and is failing. And that's what we're seeing exactly in a number of individual stocks, this precise same pattern. You could just go uh, through any number of names. I will say I am surprised at the uh, support some of these names are getting. Of course, this is Intel that got totally beaten down. But some of these stocks, our buyers are coming in on the dip. But see this view here, very similar to the group, finding support here. But finding resistance at this downward trending 200 day simple moving average. So net net, a uh, lot of broken charts, not my cup of tea. All right. Um, I'm going to maybe take a little different approach. I think they're a hold. Um, 
I know that there was a lot of selling. I've got a weekly chart up here that goes back the last three years. This is a group that really, when it moves to the upside, it moves pretty quickly. So we we saw the huge move up above, um, you know, the 20 week was above the 50 week. Price action kept moving higher. I think we ran into some momentum issues just because we had gone so far so fast. I mean, if you look back, middle of 2016, we we're at 1800 at the high. We had more than doubled in less than two years, and that's what I was referring to. This is a group that moves fast. Now, I I think it got ahead of itself. Um, clearly in 2018 and again, you know, in May, a lot of trade war fears. And this is one of the first groups to get hit hard because and rightfully so. This is a group that tends to, to um, have a lot of business um, in China. Either they have their manufacturing in China or they do a lot of business in China. Um, so it doesn't surprise me when when the market gets nervous and we start dwelling on trade war fears that this is the group that's going to get hit. So we saw the fourth quarter of last year. We saw mid-April to latter part of May, same thing. I think when these fears settle down, this is a group you want to own. So I'm looking at this long-term chart, and yes, we went straight up. I think we pulled back, established an incredibly big support level in December. We moved back up, actually took out the highs, which I think is really important because as long as we hold this low, I think we've still got this pattern of higher highs and higher lows. Now, I know this group took a tumble in May. I know this morning the group is getting hit with the Broadcom news, but I am encouraged by a couple of things. Number one, if we pull up that AVGO chart, um, you can see that we do have this hollow candle. So in other words, it's not been a gap down and then run for the exits. It's been a gap down and folks are buying right now AVGO. And this is the company that warned and said, hey, we're, you know, we're not able to meet our revenue expectations in the last quarter. And we also are saying that we're not going, we're going to lower our forecast going further. And as I mentioned earlier, AVGO relative to the semiconductors has been one of the strongest stocks. So one of the strongest stocks is coming out with a major warning. And so far, still holding on to price support established at that May low and also trading with this hollow candle. So I think there are some real positives here in that um, the price action on a longer term basis, I think, is holding. You know, when I saw you bring up your chart, uh, Mary Ellen, that, mm -hmm. uh, of the SOX, the iShares, I saw on here, I'm going to uh, lengthen it a little bit. I saw on here what I think is going to be a really important um, neckline off of this recent advance. So I wanted to just draw that in here. I think right here, and maybe if you wanted to go back even to this low right in here, but I think 175 on the SOXX is a really important level. Um, off of this move, this could be a head and shoulder top, left shoulder, neckline, head, neckline, right shoulder, and now we're coming back down. But it doesn't execute until you get a break of the neckline. I'm afraid if I sell with this weakness that we never actually break down below these May lows and that we simply resume that longer term uptrend. And so for that, that's the primary reason that I think I would want to continue to hold in this group. Now, it doesn't mean I would hold every stock. There are definitely some individual stocks that I think are much better than others. And I think the weakness right now in AMD is a, is a buy signal. Um, we had a huge run up. You can see that shooting star candle right at overhead resistance. I think the selling the last few days on light volume back to the breakout level and the 20 day moving average is a buy. So while I'd probably just be more of a hold on the overall group, I do think that there are stocks within the group that are at buy levels. And I would say AMD is one of those, because if I did get in here, I could probably keep a very, very tight stop. Uh, the 20 day maybe just below the 20 day. I don't think I'd want to go much below 29. I certainly wouldn't want to go back down below the 50 day moving average if the overall group is weak. So I think it all really depends on how you look at this. Um, yeah, very interesting uh, because you're absolutely right. I'm pulling up a bunch of stocks within semis and they are, buyers are coming in on the dip. There's no doubt. And I'll be really interested to see how they close. 
do they find support on big volume or is this, I mean, are there institutions in there supporting it? That's the volume. Or is it people uh, potentially bottom fishing, if you will? So that's going to be a key component for me as well. Uh, you look at an ADI and some of these others and, and buyers uh, are coming in on the dip. So. Yeah, I, I mentioned earlier the relative strength. I think that's another thing here to point out that when we saw that selling back in uh, November, um, we started to see the relative strength move up in December, even though the overall group was continuing to go down. I'm going to watch this relative strength line. We have started to roll back over, but we haven't lost the relative strength from back in the fourth quarter of 2018. If we do that, I think the argument to sell the group becomes a little bit stronger. Because what I'm really seeing longer term, and this goes back five years, is simply a move to the upside, a pullback, move up, pullback, and just sideways consolidation on a relative basis. So I could make a lot of arguments for buying semiconductors, but I think I'm going to go with a hold mm, for now. Very good. Uh, with an eye on maybe looking at some of the, the better semiconductor stocks that are being dragged down with the overall index, mm -hmm. where you now, now you can get into an AMD and keep a much tighter stop than you could three or four days ago when it was up near that high, because where are you going to put your stop if you're buying it at $34 when you've got a 20 day, you know, at 30 and change. So an LSCC is another uh, healthy yeah. one in that space. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to pull that one up and then we'll go through the summary and we'll take a look at the, um, uh, we'll take a look at the poll, but let me pull up S LSCC first. And on a relative chart, I wanted to point this out. Here you go. You got up here trying to make the breakout just like AMD did. And here's your pullback. Look at the volume on this. And you mentioned this. And I think it's a great point, Mary Ellen. I don't see institutions selling out of Lattice Semiconductor at this point. I saw a lot buying in. I don't see a lot selling. I think that the 20-day test could be an opportunity for a stock like Lattice. So mixed signals, a lot of things back and forth. But let's go ahead and summarize and, and bring up the poll. So, Mary Ellen, you're going with a sell, although you did say kind of like I did that there are individual stocks that are certainly worth still looking at. But mm -hmm. overall, the group you have as a sell, I have as a hold. Yeah. Or, or is there an option to say I would not be a buyer? <laughs> nope. We didn't give that one. You got it. Uh, sell and consider buying back later. That was the that was the um, overwhelming choice by the group. And I don't know that I disagree with that. If I was in the ETF, um, individual stocks, I like. I own AMD. I'm still in AMD. I'm not selling mm -hmm. um, at this point. I think that the pullback is very viable. Um, so I'm not going to sell it and try and buy back. I mean, if I, I could have looking at where it was back at $34 if I was going to trade it, but I had decided um, I'm actually following one of my portfolios. I'm holding longer, which is killing me at times, but also with uh, doing the blog, doing the show, I really don't have time to trade the way I used to. So I'm, I'm trying a, something a little different. I'm really sticking with relative strength. All right. Well, we're getting close to the end. I do want to show everybody what's going on in the market, though. Here you can see the Dow Jones really just very choppy in a narrow range the last couple hours. Kind of unusual, but the Dow has been in a 20, 25 point range for the last two hours. That's really unusual. Um, but right now, Dow down 31, NASDAQ still the laggard down 42. Actually, Russell 2000 down even more, down about uh, three quarters of 1% today. So we're ending the week, it looks like, on a sour note. But what do you think going ahead in the next week? you have any uh, forecast for next week? What do you think? Yeah, I, I'm getting a sense that we're hitting those summertime blues, the lull. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of volume. But sentiment, if we see these semis get supported, uh, it would be good news as far as the sentiment shift. And if that continues, I think we're, we're on a good roll. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that the semis will hold one of the keys. And I think you want to see, you know, when the market bounces, you want to see those leaders emerge again, the software companies and so forth. There's your upcoming schedule for next week. Got an exciting schedule for you there. Want to thank all of you for being with us today. Please remember to complete the survey as you exit. As a quick reminder, Market Watchers Live airs five days a week, Mondays through Fridays from noon to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great Friday afternoon, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe, and we'll see you back here on Monday. Happy trading.